Welcome to a very special tutorial where we will learn how to use Pydentic. Pydentic has been around for a few years now and it is still the best choice for writing classes in Python. But why would a Python developer prefer to use Pydentic library rather than writing regular classes and what are the problems that the Pydentic library solves? There is no built-in validation for received values in regular classes and Pydentic has a lot of ways doing it and we will see some examples of this in this video. Also, there is no automatic type coercion. The best example for this is when the received value has been delivered as one with double quotes except of just the integer one and Pydentic identifies that it should be coerced into an integer in regular classes that will remain a string which is problematic. And also data validations are harder to read with in regular classes because it requires to write a lot of if statements inside your constructor like in the example you see right now. And regular classes do not have built-in methods for data manipulation whereas in Pydentic based classes we have methods like JSON, copy and much more useful methods for better management of your objects. So much more to learn in this video on Pydentic. Before we begin please be sure to hit the like button in this video. It will really help me to create more valuable content for everyone that watches my videos. So now let's get into it. Alright, so this is going to be our working environment. As you can see, I have already installed Pydentic and not only it installed the library itself, it also comes with some more built-in libraries and dependencies. And as you can see here, there, are, there is also the annotated types library, which gives you basically more um, data types that you can use within your classes that are instantiated with the base model of Pydentic. All right, so we are going to assume that we are developing a quiz system. This means that creating a question class is a good candidate for the first class that we like to go ahead and create and it's going to inherit from the base model. So this means that we can go ahead and say from Pydentic import base model and then down here we can say class question which will inherit from the base model and we could start creating some fields. Now creating a field like question text is a good idea here. So I can go ahead and say question text and that will be equal to a string. Now notice how I'm using colon here and not an equal sign. This is where creating classes in a modern way could be a bit confusing because we use the colon for just specifying the type of the field. Now, of course, we are going to add some more fields in order to um, have a better looking class. But let's get our program going already by creating our first object that just creates a random value to the question text with this question and prints the field. And you can see how it looks as the result. Now, creating a question text that looks like the following is actually a bad idea because say that you really want to develop a professional website that includes tons of quizzes in different categories, then you're probably not going to um, leave this question as it is. It is more professional to have the capital letter here in the first letter of a sentence. And in addition, there is no question mark at the end of this question. And exactly for these cases, the Pydantic library is magical because validating data or doing enrichment to the data that it is not received in the format that you expect is something that you can do quite easily. So here we are just going to go ahead and say field validator. And we are going to create a method that uses the field validator as a decorator. If you don't know what decorators are, then I do have a video that explains how decorator works in Python very deeply. All right, so we are going to go ahead and create a method inside our base model class. And it's going to go ahead and use the field validator decorator. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I like to validate my field that is named question underscore text like that. And in addition, this decorator lets you do validations before or after instantiating the object. Now, obviously we'd like to do some things before instantiating the object with the field. You could also do things that will perform after you instantiate an object. But in our case, we'd like to say here mode equals to before like that. And then we are going to write our method here. We are going to go ahead and say def validate question underscore text. 
and the self will appear here and then we will receive an additional parameter that is quite mandatory to receive because of this decorator which enforces us to receive the value and this will represent the value that comes as the question text per object and then here we could write some validations or even enrichments which basically means if i receive a question text without a question mark then simply add it at the end so we could go ahead and say if not value dot ends with a question mark then we could return the same value with the question mark at the end which looks something like this return and then i could say here in value and then refer and then basically do a space and add a question mark like that and sorry about that i forgot the colon after our if statement and now if i run our program by saying python run.py then it is still going to complain about a few things here now you can see that it says field validator cannot be applied to instance methods and this basically means that you can't use the field validator as an instance method so why it thinks that it is an instance method well since the parameter here is named self for class methods which is how the field validator expects to um, work then we should be changing this to CLS. And worth to mention that I do have a dedicated video about class methods versus instance methods, but when you basically change the first mandatory parameter in a method that is created inside a class, it could be either a class method or an instance method. It could be also a static method, but right now we are talking about these two. And so when you change the first mandatory parameter to CLS, that is basically how the field validator understands that this is a class method and then it is going to function properly. So this means that if I grab our terminal and try to run our program, then you can see the result. So we said that we'd like to also fix the first letter in a sentence to be an uppercase. So this is also something that you can, of course, do inside the method before validating a question mark. So there are two options, obviously. You can go ahead and say value equals to value.title but this will make an uppercase for each word in this sentence. And this looks also nice and professional, so let's just leave it as it is. You could of course go ahead and grab the first letter by using indexing and turn that only to uppercase, but let's make things easy for now. All right, so now that we have reached so far, then let's go ahead and spice our question text field a bit. Now, maybe you'd like to limit this question text to be 100 characters. So this is where exactly we could turn our basic string field to be an annotated string. And this is something that is very valuable with the Pydantic library because you could annotate any built-in data type that exists out there. You could annotate an integer and you could limit the um, maximum number or the minimum number. You could annotate a floating number to only be between specific ranges. And that is the beauty behind the Pydantic library. It is very readable the way that you write some constraints, some limitations to your fields. So let's see how this is going to work with the Pydantic library. Now I'm going to show here the logs when I installed Pydantic we could see that it comes with some built-in libraries and one of the built-in libraries is typing extensions which is very valuable and we are going to use it just right now and we will say from typing extensions import annotated and this is the class that we are going to use which is going to handle annotations for any kind of field that you will give to it so i'm just going to change this to be annotated string and then it expects for an additional a class that will help us to write the limitations that we want to write for example the maximum length that i talked about and one of the in classes that comes with the pydating library as well is named string constraints and as we can understand from the name of the class this lets us to apply limitations for the strings now i'm going to show what happens when i hover my mouse in this class and we could already read some great attributes that we could give to it so that it will customize our string we have the ability to change all the letters to uppercase to lowercase and we could um, specify the minimum length and the maximum length as you can see here in the screen 
So let's see the syntax of that. We are going to go here and we will simply say string constraints and I will pass in maximum length equals to 100. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is the exact example of how I saw creating a string annotations, although PyCharm is not really happy with it. So I'm just going to ignore the um, warning here because that is going to work for us just as expected. So we are going to go here and we will change tab in the terminal and we will simply run our program. And you can see that now we have an annotations. But to be honest, there are, I think, 60 to 65 letters in this um, question. So I'm going to decrease the number here and see what happens if I say 40 and then run it. Then you can see that we have an exception that says string should have at most 40 characters and this is what we are looking for and that is nice that is a very nice feature um, when you work with pydentic all right so now that we understood all the options that you can apply on a simple data type like a string then let's go ahead and see what you can do with more complex types like lists or dictionaries and basically how we could create these kind of fields. Now in our scenario it could be a very meaningful to have an answers field which will include a list of answers so that we could go ahead and say answers and that will be a basically a list of string and the way that we do this with Pydentic is by using list of string like that and obviously this is something that we should import so we could import this from the typing extensions like the following and obviously if I go ahead and say answers equals to an empty list and run it then our program is not going to function because we should have changed this to 100 excuse me and now if I run it and you can see that our program runs now we could provide here some real answers like Mr. Beast um, PUDP and what other popular channels out there? Unbox Therapy. If by any chance one of you are watching my video, by the way, let me know, but probably this would never happen. So, um, anyway, let's go ahead and see now what are the additional things that you can do with a um, list. Now, we might want to um, provide the answers later on on our program and that is exactly the way that we can do that only adding an equal sign and then provide an empty list like that and of course if i go ahead and delete the answers argument from here like the following and bring our terminal and if we run our program then of course it is going to work now one trick here that i like to show that might be confusing is the fact that you really want to keep the exact same data type as you create in your instantiation of the field and what that means it means that let's go ahead and try to print the type of answers first okay so i'm going to go here and i'm going to duplicate this two times first of all i'm only going to print the value of q1 dot answers and then i'm going to sorry for cutting it should be a um, copy then i'm going to go ahead and say type of q1 dot answers and now if i run our program then you are going to see obviously that this field is a list but if you go ahead and do here equals to none then Notice how this is going to be non-type. So that is why you really want to keep the exact same data type. Otherwise, um, methods like append, extend, etc. are not going to work for you because the kind of this field has been changed from whatever it was to none because of this default value. So we really want to be careful and provide the desired default value when we uh, create the default values. Okay, so let me um, take this back to being an empty list like this. And now we could go ahead and create some additional fields which could be um, great candidates for a list of fields that you'd like to include in your class. So I'm only going to say here um, true answer and this might be something sorry a colon this might be something that you maybe want to keep it an integer because maybe you would like to refer to the true answer with numbers say if you have four answers then maybe you'd like to just point to the index of the answer so this could be something that its default value could be zero 
which you could provide later and to be honest this is where exactly maybe you could um, make this to be equal to none and the reason for that it is because integer does not have too many special um, methods that maybe you could use later but anyway i'm going to keep this in zero so that maybe this could be overridden to a number in range of one to four and of course here you could create annotations as well for an integer annotation i'm going to um, leave you the challenge of how you um, do it all right and in addition to that we could say explanation that could be also an annotated string exactly like this to be honest because we would not like to have a, a thousand characters in our string and maybe I could make this 200 because usually explanation fields are longer maybe than the questions in order to um, provide a deeper explanation about why the answer is true. And same thing here, this could be equal to an empty string at the beginning and just to show you that we did not uh, screw our program then let me delete these two lines that we were using for debugging and bring back our terminal and I'm just going to run our program and you can see that it still functions as expected. All right, so now that we have reached so far, let's take a look to the most useful methods that the uh, object will bring with it when it is using Pydentic. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to write some useful methods that we will explain what they do. So let's bring in uh, two of the uh, obvious ones because from the method name we could understand what they are doing. And I'm going to start with JSON and with dictionary okay so we have dict and json and i'm going to print these and if we bring our terminal and we run our program then you can see that the first one is a dictionary because it uses single quotes and the other one is json and the json one is very useful for immediately saving the uh, object in a json file and that's it and an additional method that i really uh, enjoy looking at is the schema method because it really gives you all the necessary metadata about your classes that is really equivalent to printing all the columns in a table in a database because it really shows it nice and uh, useful so if we go ahead and call the schema method and let me actually print this in a bit more style, all right? So I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to go ahead and use the pretty print library, which should be installed together with Python. So I'm going to go ahead and use import pprint as double P like that. And I'm going to do something like this, pp dot, and I'm going to add one more P here because this is the a shortened way saying pretty print, okay? And then I'm going to remove all the other prints, to be honest, let's make our terminal clean and I'm only going to uh, run this program now and as you can see this is a very clean look to our fields because it really shows the schema it shows that the answers have a default value and it shows that um, the default value has some items which it's type of string so this really refers to having a list of strings and we could see the same information about the question text notice how it doesn't have default like the other three and uh, again this is very very nice to look at because it also has a separated um, key value pair with the required fields and overall um, the fact that you have a lot of methods with a, the base model a class is very useful and fun to play with and we could actually see all the options here by only providing the dot sign as you can see there are tons of other methods that you could go ahead and try to play with it and understand its purposes because the reason Pydentic exists is really to uh, outstand the abilities of writing regular classes all right so that will be it about Pydentic let me know in the comment section if you'd like to watch more episodes about Pydentic because there are tons of things that um, you could learn about how to write your classes in the best practice way. And see you on my next upload.